What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Cruz. In this video, you're going to learn how to use this website called flat.io, F-L-A-T.io. A link is in the description below. Flat.io is a free music notation program and it's completely web-based. So you use your internet browser to input notes. You don't need to buy software. Um, you can, however, buy an upgrade to one of the premium services premium subscriptions that flat.io provides. So go to flat.io, again the link is in the description below, and get registered. If you're noticing mine looks a little bit different than yours because I have the teacher's edition and I'm using the same account that I've had from my last school. But don't worry about that, just go to flat.io and register. Any email address will do, um, just get registered and signed up. Um, now, music notation software, what is it? It's basically it's basically the Google Docs or Microsoft Word for music. So you have your word processors like Microsoft Word and Google Docs for making your reports and your essays and your homework assignments. Well, you have flat.io for inputting notes and recreating sheet music just like this on your computer. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So assuming you've already signed up and you're already uh, registered, uh, let's get started. So what you're going to do to uh, show your understanding of music notation programs is what you're going to do is you're going to recreate all this music that you have here from the PDF that was provided to you. You're going to recreate this PDF and put it into flat.io for your instrument. Um, so let's get started. You've already signed up, and the next thing you want to do is find this button called New Score or Tab. It's either going to be here in the middle, like mine, or on the very right side. If you don't see any of those, click on My Library, and then find New Score or Tab, either here in the middle or right here in the right side. You're going to title your document. The title of your document is going to be your name, so I'm going to put mine. I'm going to put my name for the document and click continue. Next, you're going to ask what instrument it's going to ask you what instrument you would like to start making music for. So you're going to pick your instrument, the instrument that you play. Okay, so um, let's say you play trombone. Or this is mostly low brass instruments that are going to look at this video. So you're going to go to brass instruments, the brass family. Click on that. Then you're going to add your instrument. Okay, so um, I'm going to write this in I'm going to write this in trombones, four trombones, so I'm going to click this plus sign right here. If you're a tuba player, there's tuba. If you're a euphonium bass clef, there's euphonium. If you're a baritone treble clef player, okay? You should watch the other video that I have for treble clef. All right. So um or follow along with the trumpet one. But this is going to be for bass clef instruments. And I'm going to use trombone and and and, and uh, we're going to show you how to adjust the notes so that it can be read for uh, by tuba players. All right, so once our instrument is here on the right side, okay, click create. You can add as many instruments as you want. If you want to write like a, um, in, if you want to write music for several instruments, go ahead. You can put those all in. You have all these instruments here at your disposal for um, for composing. So, anyways, we just need to make sure that we put everything here into flat.io and I'm going to use trombone as an example. Okay, uh, and then once your instrument's here, click create. All right, now you are in the main editing interface of flat.io. So let's look at some of the features here. All right, first you have your menu your menu to access all the tools okay and it's been divided up into several uh, categories over here at the top left under the flat icon or under your name um under here over here you should have a tab or a, a link called document okay if you have that okay you're fine it's, it's okay if it says document over here. If you don't have document over here, that means that your document tools are already on the upper right-hand side. Okay, 
So um, again, if you don't have what I have up here, these document tools, that means it's under your document tab, click it, and then these items will show, okay? Uh, not all monitors are as big or as wide. So sometimes what you're gonna see is those three dots for more, for more options or more tools. Click on those three dots so you could see all of the tools uh, available under that category. After your document, oh, so in your document tools, you have the following, you have undo and redo, just like a word processor or Google Docs. You have undo, redo, cut, copy and paste, saving your work, zooming in, zooming out. Um, so um, that, those are your document tools. The next set of tools is your note tools. That's where you're gonna spend most of your time in flat.io. Your note tools are how you're gonna make your sharps, flats and naturals. This is where you select your note values, your rhythmic values, dots, dotted notes, we're not gonna talk about triplets, okay? And any of these other features. Another feature we're gonna talk about in flat.io is the transposition tool, okay? That's really important, especially if you're a tuba player and you're gonna follow along with this, you're gonna to need to transpose, um, you're gonna to have to transpose in the end here uh, so that the notes are readable for and playable by you. Okay, and then um, next after that is articulation tools. Okay, this is where you could put staccato, uh, legato, fermata, slurs, uh, what else? Breath marks, okay. Ornaments, um, we're not going to be talking about ornaments. Dynamics, forte, piano, mezzo forte, crescendo, diminuendo. We're going to talk about that today. Measure, your measure menu, your measure tools. That's adding or taking away a measure. System break, we're going to talk about that. The measure tools, such as how to change clef, key signature, and time signature. We're going to talk about how to add text to your music. For example, how to add like this right here where it says A sharp, B flat chromatic scale. We're going to talk about how to add text. Here are your bar lines and repeat signs. Measure repeat, slashes. Your del senio, your coda signs, del senio signs, fine, ds, dc, first and second endings. Okay. Accelerando, retardando, and then the text tool. Okay, let's say you wrote a song and you have lyrics for your song. You could put that. You could write lyrics in chord symbols, annotations for um, you know musical instructions. All right, so those are the main menu tools for Flat.io. The next most important feature of Flat.io um, that you need to be super duper aware about at all times is this teardrop cursor right here. It looks like a raindrop. I'll call it a teardrop. It's blue. Okay, wherever that teardrop cursor is, is what gets changed in the music. If you're not aware of where this teardrop is and you start making changes in either one of the, using either one of these menus, you're going to start putting things in that you don't want in the wrong place. So make sure that this teardrop is exactly where you want it first to make changes, like make note changes, add articulations or dynamics or ornaments, to make measure modifications, those types of things. So you have to be super duper aware and careful of where that is. Just follow along in the video. I show you where those things go. I show you where the um, teardrop goes to make changes. All right, let's go to our PDF that you should already have downloaded or printed at home. In this PDF, you'll notice that you have the music down here in the bottom. You're gonna take this music and you're gonna put it into flat.io, okay? Nope, you can't highlight, copy and paste it. It's not gonna work. You gotta put every single symbol, every single detail into flat.io on your own. Another thing that you're gonna see in the PDF is this thing called workflow. Workflow is your organizational system and your to-do list. The reason why you want to have workflow is so that you're organized and you're not just, you know, you're not just putting things in as you see them. Um, if you don't have workflow, okay, there's always the potential or the possibility that you will forget to put something in to your music. So you want to have workflow every time. Every time I make uh, music using music notation software, I always write on a sketch pad or a, on um, a post-it note, a checklist of the things I'm going to do when I'm editing or composing music uh, so that I don't forget those things um, when, I'm, when I'm making 
music. So you need to have workflow. Um, you, if you put everything in one detail at a time, um, it's just going to take way too long. It's going to take forever and you're going to get burned out. So break it down into concepts. For example, I have a concept here for just pitches and rhythms, and that's all we're going to put in. As soon as that's done, we'll move to articulation, put articulations in only. Take it one concept or one element or piece at a time. Um, not all at once. Okay. All right, so that's that, and we should be getting started. All right, so let's start with our workflow. Step number one, you always have to do this at the very beginning of every um, music notation file that you start. Okay, you got to make sure that the clef, key signature, and time signature are set and ready at the beginning of your piece or your song. All right, so the clef. Now, it, the clef should already be set for your instrument. So trombones always read in treble clef. Oh, sorry, bass clef. Trombones always read in bass clef. So um, by default, it should be bass clef. But if you needed to change the clef for whatever reason, what you can do is you can hover your mouse over the clef, click on it, and then you can change the clef of um, on your staff. All right, we don't need to change the clef for trombone. Okay, we just have to click on this bass clef one here, and you're set. Okay, another way to change the clef is to go to your measure tools, click on clef right here, and then change it to bass clef or treble clef or whatever. All right, this is the bass clef clef that you're going to use. There's other bass clefs here. Okay, please like, ignore those. It's this one up here in the upper right. Okay. Uh, the next thing you need to make sure that's that is set is the key signature. Okay. Now, to change the key signature, you can hover your mouse right around here and start clicking right around here between the clef and the time signature. All right. There we go. So I clicked right here, and the, uh, 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 a palette of key signatures appears. Okay, so let's say you wanted to change your key signature to two flats. There you go, two flats. Okay. Click the time, Click the key signature and change it back to no sharps no flats the other way to change it is to go to your measure tools click key signature and then here you go you can change your key signature so i just change it to three flats measure tools key signature let's change it back to no sharps no flats because that's what our key signature is for in the pdf that's provided um, and then time signature. We don't need to change our time signature, but the way you change it is the same exact way as changing a key signature. You can hover your mouse over the time signature, click on the time signature you want to change it to. So you want to change it to C for common time. Okay, there you go. Click it back to 4-4 four, four time. All right, go here to measure tools, go to time signature, change it. Okay, change it back. All right, so we're going to be in 4-4 four, four time. So that's the opening stuff that you always have to do uh, when using flat.io. All right, the next thing we have to do is start putting in the pitches and the rhythms. You're going to be spending most of your time in flat.io putting in pitches and rhythms, okay? Um, because it's the bulk of music, the pitch and the rhythm. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your note tools. Again, this is where you're going to spend most of your time in note tools. All right, and we got to start putting in these notes. So let's get started. So first we have eighth notes, eighth notes in measure one and two. What you need to do is you go to your note tool, find the note value that you want to put into the staff, click it. So I click on eighth note. And then to insert the note into the staff, you just hover your mouse over the space that you want. Okay. And click it into the staff. All right. Oh, my volume is off that up okay there we go all right so you can click the note into the staff using your mouse or your your trackpad on your laptop click the note into the staff the other way to put a note into the staff is to type the letter in to the staff okay so if the next note here is a B okay the next notes a B I make sure my cursor is set where I want it okay and I just press B on my keyboard and there it goes. There's B in the staff. I prefer to click the note into the staff because sometimes when I'm pressing the keyboard buttons, 
the computer keyboard letters and my keyboard um the letter the note the pitch will show up in a different octave in the staff and then it's another set of steps to change that note again so to avoid doing that i prefer clicking the notes into the staff and that's what i'm going to be doing in flat.io all right um so let me erase these okay so let's start putting these notes in we have note tool click on that click on eighth note and then click the a into the staff now the first note here is a sharp the first note here is a sharp okay so we need to change this a and put a sharp sign in front of it okay so i'm going to move my teardrop cursor over oops i'm going to move my teardrop cursor over to the a by clicking on the note you can move the teardrop cursor by going left and right pressing left and right on the air on the arrow keys of your keyboard once the a is selected click sharp and now you have a sharp all right so the the next um 12 eighth notes are the 12 next eight the next 12 notes are eighth notes so let's start putting those in move the cursor over next notes b move the cursor over c next is c sharp you got to put a c first okay once you put the c in move the teardrop over underneath the c go to your note tools and click sharp and now it's c sharp let's move the cursor over d move the cursor over d sharp okay let's make sure i have an eighth note set and click d first move the cursor over and click d sharp the sharp to make it a d sharp let's move the cursor over add in an e all right so i just made a mistake okay two ways to fix this mistake you can move the cursor over to the note and use your up and down arrow keys to um, adjust the pitch okay so you could do that if you make a very big oops and you don't really know what to do you can hit undo okay undo is in your document tool so click document tool which might be over here and you want to find this circle pointed counterclockwise and click undo okay another way to undo is on your keyboard if you use a mac click on apple z or press apple z or command z if you have a pc or a chromebook press Control z okay so let's get rid of this by clicking undo all right so d d sharp e okay so i hit undo to go back to a setting that i'm familiar with the next note here is f so i'm going to click my eighth note here and click F all right the next note in the next measure is F sharp put an F first move the cursor over to the F then click sharp to make it F sharp the next note move the cursor over is G then G sharp we need to make this G sharp move the teardrop cursor over add sharp okay if that teardrop cursor is not on this G and it's somewhere else, you're gonna sharp something else. So we need to make sure that the teardrop cursor is over the underneath the note that you want to change, and then you can you can modify the accidental, the sharp, flat, or natural. After G sharp is A, move the cursor over, click the A in. The next note is a half note. Okay, so I want to put a half note right here. Go to my note tools, click on half note. And now I could put in half note A sharp. All right, so this needs to be A sharp. Move my cursor over, click sharp. And now it's a half note A sharp. All right. Going down, the next 12 eighth notes are eighth notes. <laughs> the next 12 notes are eighth notes. That's what I meant to say. So let's move the cursor over, click eighth note. Here we go. B flat. So we got to click in a B first move the cursor over and then hit flat all right to make it b flat if you don't do that it's going to be b natural again because we don't have sharps and flats on our key signature it's got to be b flat let's move the cursor over b flat to a move the cursor over a flat okay we need to make this a flat so move the cursor over to the a again and click a flat click the flat sign there you go see how it's all matching so far let's move the cursor over 
G, G flat, move the cursor back to G flat, hit the flat sign, now you have G flat. Let's move the cursor over, F, E, E flat. Let's move the cursor over here, the teardrop to this E, and make it flat. Then D, D flat. Move the cursor over. Now the way I moved the cursor over was I just clicked right here first and then the teardrop moved over. Then B. And then we want to put a half note here. So let me click half note. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be B flat. So let me highlight that B again. Or select the B again with the teardrop cursor and click flat. And there we go. With the first line, uh, the first line is done. Okay, next, measure five. We have an F chromatic scale. Okay, we have an F chromatic scale here, and they're all quarter notes. Okay, so this is easy. Click on note tool, click on quarter note. All right, so I started making changes up here without making sure that the uh, cursor was in the right spot. So I'm gonna, I made a mistake, so I'm gonna hit undo. That's Apple Z or Command Z on a Mac, or Control Z on a computer, or a PC or Chromebook. All right, there's my half note again, all good. I need to put my cursor down here in measure five. And now I can start clicking quarter notes in. So go to my note tools, click quarter note, and let's start putting on our F chromatic scale. All right, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Let's make this G sharp. A, a sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cursor over here, click on the A, and then click on the sharp to make it A sharp. Next is B, C. Okay, now we're over here in measure seven, C sharp. You want this to be C sharp, so let's. I can click this C or move the cursor over, and hit sharp. Next is D. Make sure my cursor is here. D, then D sharp, then E, and then we want to put a whole note here. All right, so I'm going to click on whole note and click F. And now we have my F whole note. So measure five, six, seven, and eight are finished. Let's move on to measure nine. We still have quarter notes. We The next 12 notes are quarter notes. So F, next note's an E. Next note's E flat. Okay. To make this E flat, move the teardrop cursor underneath this E and click flat. Then D. Move the teardrop cursor over. D flat. C over here. Okay. And I'm still in quarter notes. B. B flat. Move the teardrop cursor over. Click B flat. Next note is A. Oops. Sometimes that happens. You click in the wrong spot and it adds an extra note. So hit undo. All right. A, we want this to be A flat. So our cursor is here. Our teardrop cursor is under the A. Click A flat. Then G. G flat. Move the teardrop cursor over to the G. Click flat to make it G flat. And the last note over here is going to be a whole note F. So let's move the cursor over, click whole note, then click a low F. All right, so that is measures 9 through 12 in flat.io. All right, so that's how you insert quarter notes. All right, looking ahead here, measure 13. Um, these notes are lower, which is fine, okay? You need to know how to read these notes anyway. Measure 13. Um... Now we have dotted quarter notes. Notice that there's a little dot next to this quarter note. All right, we have dotted quarter notes followed by eighth notes. So how do we make dotted quarter notes? And at the same time, it's a low A sharp. Okay, so we have to change the accidental. We have to, we have to add an accidental, and then we have to make it a dotted quarter note. All right, so here we go. It's a kind. It's a quarter note. So let's click quarter note first. All right, and then put in a low A sharp. Low A sharp is three ledger lines below the staff. 
Okay, so right now I can't see my ledger line. So what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click the node in. Move the teardrop cursor over. And then press my down arrow on my computer keyboard to change that note to a low A. Now that needs to be low A sharp. There's my teardrop cursor. It's under the low A and make it low A sharp. There you go. All right. Now we need to make this a dotted quarter note A. So teardrop cursor is set. Click dot. Oh, by the way, dot is under your note tools. Click the dot and click dot again. There is this double dot thing. Okay, we're not using double dots. Make sure it's single dot. All right. After A sharp is B. We want, it, we want the B eighth note to go here. So I'm going to go to my note tools, click B. All right. And click the B into the staff. All right. That's B natural, by the way. Had there been a key signature, two flats, B flat and E flat, that would have automatically have been a B, but this is B natural. All right, next is C dotted quarter note. First, you got to make a quarter note. So click quarter note first, click the C into the staff, move the teardrop cursor back to the C, click the dot, and now you have a C dotted quarter note. We want to put an eighth note C sharp right here. Let's move the cursor, the teardrop cursor over. Click eighth note and click C first. All right. Move the teardrop cursor back and then click sharp. And now we have an eighth note C sharp in bass clef. Keep going. Next is a D dotted quarter note. Make the D first. Make the quarter note D first. Go back. Put the teardrop underneath the D. Click the dot. And now it's dotted quarter note D. We want to put a D sharp over here. Let's make it an eighth note. Click eighth note in your note tools. Make it a D natural first. Move the teardrop cursor back to the D. And then click sharp. We need to put an E dotted quarter note here. So I'm going to click quarter note. And then click E. That's E natural, by the way. Had there been a key signature, B flat and E flat over here, that would have been E flat, but it's an E natural. So we need to make this a dotted quarter note E. Move the teardrop back to the E. Click on dot, add the dot, and now it's E. Next, we need to put an F eighth note here. So click eighth note. The teardrop is here. Click F eighth note. The next few notes are eighth notes. F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. So all we need to do is go to your note tools, click on eighth note, and start clicking the, clicking in the notes. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and then A sharp. This over here at the end is a half note A sharp. So I'm going to put I'm going to click half note, insert A first as a half note. Insert the A as a half note. Go back, put the teardrop cursor underneath the A, and make it A-sharp. All good. All right, so you're noticing that the one, two, three, the fourth line of your PDF, the fourth line of your PDF is three measures long, one, two, three. But in flat.io, it's one, two, three, four measures long. We need to put this measure, uh, measure 16, underneath measure 13. So how do we do that? Let's put the teardrop cursor underneath measure 16. Oops, undo. Put the teardrop cursor underneath measure 16, go to your measure tools, and then click on system break. And now measure 16 gets put into the bottom of measure underneath measure 13. It's kind of like pressing enter on your computer keyboard to make start a new paragraph, right? Um, Okay, so uh, what is a system? Why is it called a system break? Okay, well, uh, a system in music is a line of music. All right, a system in music is, is, is a line. All right, so for example, in this PDF, we have one, two, three, four, five systems. Five systems of music or five lines. 
Now, how come they're called systems but not lines? Well, it's, it's real simple. We have too many lines in music already. We have way too many kinds of lines. We have ledger lines, we have staff lines, measure or bar lines. So we want to eliminate the number of uses of the word lines. Um, so we call them in music systems. So we're trying to create five systems of music in flat.io, and this is how you do it. You set the cursor where you want it, and you kill and you click on system break had my had my cursor been right here and i hit system break okay this whole thing will drop down to the next measure watch see that okay this is not what we want okay let's pretend that was a big mistake i'm just going to hit undo so that's apple or command z on your computer if it's an apple or control z on a mac uh Control Z on a PC or Chromebook. And back to normal. Okay. All right. So let's go back to measure 16. We are almost done, guys. All right. So put the teardrop cursor here. We have an eighth note B flat. So let's go to our note tools. Click eighth note. Click a B first. All right. To make that a B flat, move the teardrop cursor underneath the B and then go to your note tools and click flat. Done. All right. The next section right here, the next um, symbol is an eighth rest. There's already an eighth rest there for you. So let's move the teardrop cursor over two spaces. One, two. We want to put an eighth note, A, over here. So let's click on eighth note, insert the A. This needs to be an eighth rest, so let's leave that alone. Move the teardrop cursor over here. Click eighth note, click A. This needs to be A flat. Move the teardrop cursor underneath this A and click flat. The next part is an eighth rest. We want to put a G eighth note here. So let's click eighth note, click uh, the G into the staff, and there you go. All right, so you're noticing that we need to add two more measures to the fifth line or the fifth system. Okay, so set your teardrop cursor for the end. If this happens to you, okay, set the teardrop cursor to the end here click on measure and then find this symbol right here insert measure after okay i'm going to click it twice to add two more measures and there we go all right had your teardrop cursor been somewhere else like right here there will be two measures inserted right here in between these two measures okay so you need to make sure that at all times like i say you got to make sure that the teardrop cursor is in the right spot before you make big changes like this measure changes all right, the next eight, the next eight notes are eighth notes. All right, so let's start clicking those in. This will be really fast and easy. So click eighth note, G. This needs to be G flat though. So back up, highlight it with the teardrop cursor, and click flat. G flat, F, E. This needs to be E flat. Okay, my teardrop is set. Go back. Go to your note tools, click flat. Now you have E flat. Over here, D. D flat. Let's move the teardrop cursor over again. All right. Go to your note tools and click flat. After D flat is C. And then B natural. And then your last note, your last note, okay, is a whole note. So I, I'm making sure that my teardrop cursor is here in the very beginning of the last measure. Click whole note, and then find low B flat. Okay, now it came out as a B natural, so you need to make it flat. Move the teardrop cursor over and click flat. All right. Now, when we added the whole note, it made another measure for us. So we need to get rid of this extra measure. Um, move the teardrop cursor over here to the last measure that we don't need. Go to your measure tool and click remove measure. And there we go. Now you have the fifth system, one, two, three, with three measures. All right, congratulations. You are done with the largest part of this assignment, which is clicking the notes into the staff. All right. So that was part two of our workflow. Next is articulation. Okay, so let's go to articulation up here. All right, articulation, this is where we add things like our uh, staccatos and accents. Okay, so I'm looking through our PDF. 
All right, and the only articulation that I see that we need to put in are accents and staccatos, okay? Um, we have slurs coming up later. We have slurs coming up later, but let's see. Accents and staccatos, that's gonna be in measure five and six only. So let's move the teardrop cursor to measure five, and let's click on accent, okay? This is under your articulation tool, then click accent. All right, move the teardrop cursor over. I'm gonna use my computer arrow keys. Accent, move it over again, accent. You can click the note also to move the, the teardrop cursor. Click accent, all right. Over here, I'm gonna move the teardrop cursor over to this A. All right, and I'm gonna make it staccato. So click staccato. Move the teardrop over, hit staccato. Okay, see how we added that? So the, wherever the teardrop cursor is, is where you're gonna put the articulation, okay? Let's say I wanted to put a fermata right here on this on this C sharp. Click the C sharp and put a fermata if you wanted to put that in, all right? But we're not gonna use a fermata. Let's say that was a mistake, hit undo. And that, that the fermata goes away. All right, so that is articulation number three. Next is slurs, number four, slurs. Okay, so let's start throwing in slurs. Where do we have slurs in our PDF? Okay, we have slurs in the second system over here in measure seven, and then we have slurs in measure nine and 10 in the third system. Okay, so let's move our cursor to measure seven on the A sharp, or sorry, C sharp. I'm not used, I, I read that in treble clef. Okay, so let's move the cursor over to C sharp and then click on slur. And there you go. All right, now the, it's a little bit quirky. The slur should be like this on the PDF, but it's gonna do this on flat.io. Don't worry about that, It's this is fine, okay? So again, the teardrop cursor was on the, uh, on the C sharp and it's gonna start the slur on the C sharp and slur automatically to the next note, okay? Let's move the teardrop cursor over here to D sharp. Okay, and then let's click on slur again, and then it slurs uh, automatically to the E. Okay, so on flat.io, the slur, when, when you slur in flat.io, it always automatically, by default, slurs to the next note. Okay. All right, the next set of slurs is in measure nine. You're gonna slur four quarter notes. So let's click on the first note of measure nine. Click on slur. All right, and like I said earlier, by default, the slur is always to the next note. You'll notice that on the slur, there are these circles on the edges, on the side. Those are your handles. Click on those handles, click and drag to the notes that you want to slur to. So you could slur a lot of notes, or you could slur just to the next note. Okay, well, we need to slur the whole measure here. Okay, let's move the, let's move the teardrop cursor over to the D flat. Click slur again, because we need to slur all four of these quarter notes, click the handle, slur all the way to B flat. Okay, and then you are done with slurs. I don't see any more slurs here in the PDF. All right, after slurs are repeat signs. Okay, we have a repeat sign and measure five, six, and measure seven, and the end of measure eight. So let's put our cursor here at the beginning of measure seven, go to measure tools, then click on left repeat. And there you go, there's your left repeat sign, your opening repeat sign for measure seven. We need to put a closing repeat sign right here at the end of measure eight. So let me put my cursor here and then click on right repeat. This is under your measure tools, click on right repeat. And now you have this, this repeat sign, just like this one right here. All right, all done. We don't have any more repeats to do. After repeats, bar lines, okay, bar lines. You might've noticed that the, at the end of the first system or the first line, and at the end of the third line, we have these double bar lines. So let's highlight this note right here. Move the teardrop cursor over here to the, to the B flat. Go to your measure tools and then click on double bar line. And bam, there you go, there's your double bar line, just like this one in the PDF, okay? Let's go to the third system, the low F here. Let's click that F, click on double bar line, and there you go. There's your double bar line at the end of measure 12, all right? 
Next is next are your dynamics, and I mean dynamic symbols such as piano and forte and all that. So we only have two dynamic symbols here, forte and piano. So we have a forte here in the beginning of measure three. You have a forte here in the beginning of measure three. Move the teardrop cursor over here, go to dynamic, and click forte. The forte appears here because that's where the teardrop cursor is. All right. Had the teardrop cursor been somewhere else, you would have put forte somewhere else. And then at the very end of measure four is a piano symbol. So let's click that and click piano. All right. So the reason why piano is here is because of the teardrop cursor. It's underneath this B flat. All right, after dynamic symbols are your crescendo and diminuendo markings, okay? And that's these, that's these uh, greater and less than signs, okay, or little alligator marks. All right, so let's throw those in. Wherever the teardrop cursor is, is where the crescendo is going to start. So if you want our crescendo to start on this F sharp, I got to highlight F sharp here with my teardrop cursor. Go to dynamic tools and then click crescendo. You'll notice, let me move the teardrop out of the way. You'll notice that when you select the crescendo, there are these handles. You can you can click and drag the handles and make them as wide or as short as you want to. Okay? Cool. The next one is a diminuendo. You're going to diminuendo all of this, measure uh, three to the end of measure four. So I want to put, we want to start our diminuendo right here and click diminuendo all right and we want the diminuendo to go all the way to the piano to the piano symbol and there you go oops all right so um that's that's how you add this in now is it level and straight don't worry about it okay um you'll notice that as i clicked i you might have heard another sound make sure when you click around the staff you don't accidentally add notes kind of like you know kind of like that you don't want that to happen. So if you if that does happen and you change notes, immediately undo. Okay. All right. So that is crescendos and diminuendos. All right. Wherever the teardrop is, is where the crescendo or the diminuendo is going to start. All right. The next one is transposing. Okay. So if you're a tuba player, okay, if you're a tuba player and you're looking at this stuff and you're like, man, this stuff is way too high. Okay. You have to do something called transposing. All right. If you look at measure 13, if you look at measure 13, for example, so um, right here, measure 13, uh, trombones, euphonium players, you're looking at this and you're like, man, this is way too low. So how do you change that? OK, well, you have to do something called transposing. Now, what is transposing? Transposing is when you take a collection or a group of notes in your music and you move or you adjust all of those notes at the same interval. OK, um, that's called transposing. So in this case, we want to transpose these notes down an octave. So, for example, tuba players, if you've been following along, you know, you know that you can't play these notes up here because these are way too high. All right. So we need to transpose all these notes down one octave. So how do you do that? First, you highlight. OK, you click, you click and drag and highlight all the notes that you want to change. All right, go to your measure or your note tools. And then in your note tools, you're going to want to find this button called transpose. If you cannot see that button transpose, look for the three dots. Click on those three dots and you should see the transpose icon, which is a flat symbol, a note head, and a double headed arrow pointing up and down. So once you've highlighted the notes that you want to transpose, click on transpose here under your note tools this dialog box shows up interval keep leave this alone quality is going to be perfect you want to change it one octave going down okay i'll just i'll say that one more time interval keep it at unison quality is perfect okay octave one make it a one and direction one octave down okay I apply transposition and there you go that is more like it right tuba players so if you're a tuba player and you need to play these notes in this range change it to that okay now the because this is for trombones all right i'm going to move this back up 
All right, so all I did was hit undo, command Z or control Z on my keyboard and it changed it. All right, um, looking ahead here. All right, so how about down here, measure 13? Okay, so trombone players, you're looking at measure 13, you're like, hey, you know what, I wanna play this, but this is way too low. All right, so again, highlight. I, sorry, I clicked over here, click, drag, highlight all the measures that you need go to transpose which is under your note tools okay interval keep it unison quality is perfect octave change it to a one and the direction you want it to go is up and then hit apply transposition and if now if you're a baritone or a trombone player and you're looking at these notes you're like yeah that's more like it i can play those all right so let's hit Command Z to undo that. So now this is back to normal. So now you know how to transpose a note. So if you're ever trying to copy something, you're like, yeah, that's way too high or too low. Now you know about the transposition feature. Okay. All right, next, we're almost done, everybody. Next is adding text. Okay, so you'll notice here that I have the scales labeled. Okay, so for the first system here, you have A sharp B flat chromatic scale the fourth system a sharp b flat chromatic scale and then the second system f chromatic scale so we're going to put that into our music all right so again wherever the teardrop cursor is is where you're going to put the changes so we want a sharp b flat chromatic scale to be here in the first measure so i'll move my teardrop cursor here to this low first uh, first note a sharp i'm going to go to measure tool and then i'm going to go click on rehearsal i'm going to add text and you, you just simply write it in a sharp slash B flat chromatic scale and click add and there you go there's a sharp B flat chromatic scale it puts it in a box which is fine I don't really I really don't care let's go to measure five we want to put F chromatic scale in measure five so go put the teardrop cursor here all right click on measure tools click on rehearsal and click text what happened rehearsal click text write it in f chromatic scale and click add and there you go measure five is now labeled as f chromatic scale it did take away the measure number but that's fine and then measure 13 let's go to measure 13 go to this very low a sharp Click on measure tools, click on rehearsal, and click text. Let's add it in. A sharp slash B flat chromatic scale. Click add, and there you go. All right, so um, in this document, you're gonna have two, chroma two chromatic scales, two A sharp chromatic scales, okay? One that's a higher one and one that's a lower version. If you do want to play this on your instrument and you're like, yeah, some of these notes are too high or too low, go ahead and transpose them. All right, so we're, we're finished adding text. Okay, great job, everybody. You are basically done. Now we have to save or print your work. Okay, so go to your document tools. If you have document that shows up here, click on it. Otherwise, if your monitor is wide enough, um, your document tools show up here in the automatically in the upper right of the interface. So find this icon right here called uh, that looks like a printer. Click on it and then click on start printing. I use a Mac, so this shows up when I, when I hit the printer um, icon. I have the option to send it straight to my printer. This is my printer. I can save it as a PDF, okay? And then um, when you hit save it as a PDF, you, type, you name the PDF file, um, and then it gets saved as a file to your computer, okay? Um, and then what you could do with that file is you could drag that file into an email or attach it to an email. You can attach it to a Schoology assignment or use it as a, or attach it to your submissions in Schoology. Um, or you could take that file and drag it to Google Drive. Over here, save to Google Drive. This will automatically save to Google Drive as long as you are signed in to your Google Drive. Okay, so this is one of the ways to save it. If you do save it to Google Drive, make sure you take the link of the Google Drive file and then and send that link and share it to my email address so that you can submit your assignment. Okay, at the time of this recording of Advanced Band and Advanced Orchestra have already done this. 
All right, and we have about half the students saving to Google Drive and then sending me the Google Drive link um, in my email or in Schoology. All right, so that's one way to save your work through the printer icon. The other way to save your work is by pressing this cloud icon with the down arrow and then click on printable PDF. Okay, and uh, merge rests and measures. Don't worry about that. Let's turn that off. Okay, don't worry about these things. If you see these hearts, um, these yellow hearts, these are for the premium features. Don't worry about that. Okay, so then let's click export. And if you saw right here, it's getting saved right now to my desktop on my computer. All right. Um, and so now what you could do with that file, what you could do now with that file is take that file, this PDF, and send it to me as a, an, a, a file attachment on Schoology or a, a file attachment in the email or drag and drop this file into Google Drive and um, save and then, you know, submit the file to me. All right, so that's saving your work. All right, so you are basically all done. Um, I love music notation software. Um, music notation software um, really encouraged me and motivated me to learn more and more music, um, especially when I was younger. I remember coming home from school and then I would open up my band folder and um, I would look at all the parts that I'd always get confused with in band class and I would put those parts into the music notation software and what I would do with the music notation software is I, I, I would have the music notation software play the music back for me and now I have a model and a guide as to how to play this music. Um, it would play it for me with the correct rhythm and it would play the correct pitches for me and um, I pretty much had like a virtual private teacher by using uh, music notation software. Um, whoops. So, a couple of things you could do. You can, when, let's say this was a piece of band music and you really wanted to practice this, okay, what you can do is you could set the metronome on and the tempo is coming from here. Okay, so you can change the tempo here. All right. And then you can hit play. So let's move the teardrop cursor over to the beginning. And if I hit play, it's going to play from the beginning because that's where the teardrop cursor is. And let's hit play. stop right there okay so you can hear it being played for you okay let me hit metronome off one thing I didn't I noticed is I didn't see like a scroll feature let me try that again okay so let me try that again Okay, so you can have this thing play it back for you, all right, and you can play along with it, all right. If you just want to hear how it goes, more power to you. You're, you're welcome to do that as well, all right. Let's say you're having trouble playing a piece of uh, a section of your band music, and you just want to hear how it goes, plug all the notes and the rhythms in and the articulations and stuff into flat.io and have it played for you. And then you could go, oh, yeah, that's how it goes. So I remember when I was in band class, I always had the I always had the edge in learning all the music because I was the first one, usually the first one to finish all the music first because I always had someone to play it for me and that was my computer. Okay, so now you know how to play it back and use this as a practicing guide, okay? So turn this assignment into me, okay? Do this very carefully, make sure it's exact. You're gonna be graded on how accurately you copy the PDF and um, turn this assignment into me. And then if you have any band, any band music or songs that you wanna put into the computer, um, go for it and practice it and f then learn how it goes, okay? As long as it's correct, okay, you're gonna learn a lot from this thing, all right? So have fun with that. Don't forget, this is a homework assignment.